Lions TV, we are sponsored by Regal Elevators and Lifts Consultants Limited, a company that is owned and operated by a Millwall fan, just like every single one of the sponsors that you can see in and around my huge head. If you are going to do a bit of business in a chaos this 2020, then please keep it in the Millwall family and check out all of our sponsors' website links in the description below. Yes, I said I wasn't doing this video, but I realised today is Thursday. <laughs> And we're playing again on Saturday away at Hull. Really looking forward to that one, by the way. Um, so, yeah, I thought I'd just quickly cover a very... I'm not going to cover the game as such yesterday. I'm going to cover aspects of the game, individuals, and things that I just think are, are, are blatantly, obviously, and glaringly wrong in our play that we seem to have not picked up since lockdown. It was doing very well uh, pre-lockdown. So... Yeah, not, not, not the most interesting video you're ever going to watch or higher tempo or exciting, but um, these videos need to go out still, unfortunately. Saying that, funny enough, today uh, and last night when, I, when, I, when it dawned upon me that I had to do a video today, I used to ha have a, a job that I hated. I fucking despised going to work and every night I didn't want to go, when I'm going to bed, I'm thinking, for fuck's sake, I've got to work tomorrow. Uh, this morning was one of the I think the first times ever since I've been doing the four and a half years of Lions TV that I thought, oh, I've got to do a video later. I usually I love the videos, I live for the videos, but um, not looking forward to today's work, unfortunately. Let's talk about it. Um, it might be a bit sporadic. Things might pop into my head. Let's start out with some things that I've seen online that other people have, have, have mentioned, not not just on Lions TV comments, just in general across you know across social media on a few meal outlets. The first one is the formation yesterday. And I've said this before and I say it again. Three at the back isn't a problem for me. Uh, we had to do that, I think, to tighten up because we was, we was a little bit leaky, which we never usually are since lockdown. And I think three at the back works. I think Pierce being on the pitch and being the leader works. I don't think that makes us ultra-defensive. Some people I see yesterday saying, why have you gone three, why has he gone three at the back or five at the back against against um, Middlesbrough team? You know, we need to win if, if we want to stay in contention for the playoffs. And by the way, the playoffs is gone now. Uh, I'm sick to death of people saying, oh, but Cardiff lost and, oh, but so-and-so are losing. Doesn't matter. I'm not even not even going to discuss the playoffs now, not until the players show me that they're up for it and then I might start talking about it again because it is possible. <laughs> four games left, four very winnable games, but it's not happening. And it's until the players pull the finger out their arse and show they're interested in making it, even slightly, I'm not going to talk about it again. So I'm going to talk about the formation to start with yesterday. Five at the back it isn't a problem. It's more free at the back. And what that does, that allows the, the wing-backs to bomb on. But you'll see these things that um, I use for the pre-match lineups, And then I'm going to show one in a minute or now. I'm not sure when I'm going to show it. It'll pop up on the screen at some point. During the edit, I'll decide where. But we had three at the back. And then you've got Mar uh, Murray Wallace. He's, I like Murray Wallace. Very solid defensive. But he doesn't really get forward. We don't get forward half as much down our left as we do down our right. So um, that's fine. You know, you can't have it both ways. You know, we're a lot more defensive down our, down our left. And that's fine. But Murray Wallace isn't the sort of player that's going to bomb on. Get beyond, get on the overlap, and, and put, uh, put a good standard of crosses into the box. Down the right-hand side, and I'm going to, I'm going to say a few... Uh, There's going to be a few unpopular opinions today. And by the way, listen... We'd rather be where we are this season than at the other end of the table where Cholton are, which was where we were last season, fighting for our life. So let's remember it's been a, a very good season overall, a successful season, regardless of where we finish now. It's been a, a massive improvement on last year. It's been a season of transition because, you know, obviously the gaffer went, brought 10 new players in, with, uh, in, in the summer. Then Harris leaves and Rowick comes in. Then we've had lockdown. It's been a very difficult stop-start season. So... I'm not moaning by any stretch. Uh, you know, it's frustrating because we, we always seem to get to that level where we think we can push on a little bit further. It's not going to happen this season, but again, moving forward as a club, in my opinion, still bringing in good standard of players. And I'll get onto one of those players in a minute. But um, yeah, it's, um, it is what it is. Where was we? We were talking about the formation. Okay, so you've got your back three. I, I like the back three. I think it works. But then when you've got Murray Wallace that isn't very attacking... You've got Marlon Romeo, and this is going to be, you know, it's going to be an unpopular opinion. I, I love Marlon, right? I love all of our players. I don't want to slag any of our players off. And there's, there's different types of footballers. Matt Smith, for example, and I'm going off a bit, but I'm going to come back to it. Matt Smith is not what I would call a, a, a good footballer. And by that, I mean a technically good footballer. 
Matt Smith doesn't strike a ball nicely. Um, Matt, Smith, Matt Smith's all-round play isn't fantastic. But what Matt Smith will do is he'll affect football matches and he'll score goals. Now, I would rather have people on the pitch that would do that than, than the other way around. Um, I think we've got... You know, let's, let's start out with Marlon Romeo. Marlon's very exciting. Um, when he attacks at pace, uh, he's confident. He, he's, he, he's very, very good to watch. He is exciting to watch. But unfortunately, I'm going to say what I'm going to say. I don't think Marlon Romeo technically is a very good footballer at all. He's improved massively defensively under Gary Rowett. He looks exciting when he comes forward. But his, his actual striking of the ball, his passing ability, you know, and his crossing are not very good. And that is why, you know, coming down that right-hand side, if, if, if Romeo's not at it, Jed Wallace, another one. Now, Jed is technically a very good footballer. He's very erratic. Uh, I don't think... Jed, Jed's a raw talent. I don't think Jed Wallace has got a fantastic football brain by any stretch. Uh, and he's been miles off it since lockdown. But listen, he is, he is our main man, whether we want to admit it or not. You know, the stats don't lie, the goals, the assists... But if he isn't at it, which is fine, I haven't got a problem with Jed not being at it. He can't be at it every single game. Since lockdown, he hasn't really been at it any game, um, other than I thought he played all right against Cholton. Uh, so that's that's your right-hand side, completely wiped out. You've got three centre-halves. You've got Murray Wallace doesn't really bomb on. You've got Romeo and Jed not, pro not producing. And then the problem we've got is, and it's not a problem, because when Ryan Woods first came to the club, I was singing his praises. Ryan Woods, technically, is a fantastic, fantastic footballer. And I've said this before in previous videos, and I don't know if people haven't picked it up. He is actually too good a footballer for how we play and the players that we've got around him. He's too good for it. And I've said this before. He'd be better in, 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 a, in a top side in this division. Um, the problem I've got, it isn't a problem with Ryan Woods. Ryan Woods can sit in front of the back three. And by the way, Gary Rowett today has come out and confirmed what I've, I've, I've sort of known the whole time, or thought definitely to myself, that Ryan, he's going to try and sign Ryan Woods. He signed him before for £6 million, and he wants to bring him back to London, where he played very well for Brentford, not under Gary Rowett, but he wants to bring Woods to the, to the club permanently. And Woods, Woods is going to be one of them that's going to play regardless. The manager rates him highly, and that's fine. Rowett seen more of him than we have. And I think... He wants Woods in, but I think he wants to add to Woods to bring the best out of Woods. The problem you've got is Woods will just literally sit on the toes of the back three. He's not a tackling midfielder. He definitely doesn't get forward. He's very, very technically brilliant. Very good. Beautiful passing range. Uh, great vision. But if you're going to have Woods now sitting in front of a back three, you cannot play anyone else like Sean Williams, like Jason Malumbi, like Ryan Leonard... In that team, if you're going to play Ryan Woods in that team, because Ryan Woods will sit. I love Sean Williams to death. Think he's a great player for me. Will always sing his praises. I didn't know he was on the pitch yesterday because he sat next to Ryan Woods, and now because he sat next, he naturally sits deep. So now he sat deep next to Ryan Woods. Three centre backs next to them. Murray Wallace not really bombing on. Jed and Romeo not producing, and that's why we're not getting forward, getting anyone forward, or creating any sort of patterns of play, because. The, the defence and the, and, the, and the people I've mentioned, the midfield two that are sitting, they're so detached from, from what's going on further up the pitch because Woods will spray a 60-yard pass, but that's no one else is getting forward to join in. And it's just Ben Thompson, if he's, if he's going to play that one sitting in front of a back three and then two central midfielders, it has to be two very attacking central midfielders. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again, play Jed there. Uh, play Ben Thompson there. I don't know, but at the minute, Mason Bennett would be a good would be the good answer there. Obviously, he wasn't fit again yesterday, which is again unfortunate for us because we do seem to play better when he's in the side, and he's one of the few at the club, like Marlon Romeo will run at people and, and uh, fearlessly, like Jed will, like Conor Mahoney will. So yeah, in the end, all that really left was was Ben Thompson pushing on and trying to join in with uh, with Matt Smith because no one else was at it. Uh, Thompson did well, did the best he could, but we're just so. We're so detached as a team. We're not. We're not moving up the pitch together. We're not getting people forward. And that's the thing. When I go, when I go back to Woods, he, he's a great player technically, but we haven't got the players around him to to join in. Williams was too deep. Woods was too deep. Sitting on the toes of a back three, and then wing backs that aren't getting on. Jeb Wallace not on his game. It was just we was miles off it, you know. And and despite that, again, you just you just felt they just don't seem interested. It just seems really really weird. I mean, obviously. They must be interested, you know. They were so interested before lockdown. They just—it just looks like a different team. It looks like a team that's just just given up on the season. It looks like players that don't really want to want to be out there. Listen, maybe they don't want to be out there. Maybe they don't want to be out there during during this this virus. But 
they are right now. They've got to do the best of what they've got. It's too many of them just seem to be going through the motions and not doing the right things and, and, and glaringly obvious things, in my opinion, as well. And again, I'll get on to the corners. We used to score, and we still have this season, again, pre-lockdown, scored the majority of our goals. We're, we're always known and deadly from our set pieces. I don't know. If, I mean, maybe I'm stupid because I'm, I'm seeing the corners, and before the corners come in, I can see it's not going to work because they are going and standing ahead of the ball. So when the ball comes in, they've all got to try and go back on their cells to try and then levitate some power to, and leverage to jump and, and, and head back or kick back in the opposite direction. It's, it doesn't work like that. You've got to run onto the ball. You've got to time your run. They're all getting underneath the ball. The corners are coming in. Jeb Wallace's deliveries, man, honestly. Jeb Wallace's deliveries. Uh, I don't know what's going on. I, I, no, what I, <coughs> so bad. I just don't know what to say about it. I, just, I was a little bit lost for words. Sean Williams is the best one for us to take corners because he hangs it up and usually the big men would come flying in, time their runs, running onto a header, you know, and getting saying on it, heading it goalwards. It's just, maybe I'm, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but it just seems the most basic, stupid, uh, amateurish approach to corners I've ever seen. And we, and so we used to thrive off set pieces in corners. It was, um, it was an exciting time when the crowd were at the den and we used to get corners. It was just, it's just gone, everything's just gone backwards. Everything's gone gone backwards. I don't know what it is, mate. Just it's just painful. It was painful to watch yesterday. And when people say, "Oh, but we have possession," when you have the ball deep on near your own penalty area, Middlesbrough and, and other teams are going to let you have that. They're, they're not interested. You can all pop the ball for as long as you like, but you've got to affect football matches going forward. This is the thing. I've you know Woods, great player. Is he going to affect a football match? Not in my opinion. Not not what I've seen from him so far. And yes, listen, he is technically very. Very good, but 60 yard diagonals are not gonna, they're not, they're not good for us. They're not good for us. We need people hustle and bustle, higher up the pitch, making things happen. Connor Mahoney should have started the game. Uh, Gary Rowett's actually telling news at Den today that he, um, he's gonna have a big part to play next season. Okay, he's tracking back maybe a bit in question sometimes. But when he gets on that ball, he will make things happen. And you'd rather that than, than, than people who don't want the responsibility. What's the point in having 11 technically good players on the pitch that all want to play two-yard passes? you never get anywhere. you never score any goals. Mahoney will come on. Yes, he might kick one out, out of the ground on one occasion, but he's, he's passing, he's crossing technically, he's very good. He's technically a very good footballer and very confident in the final third. He, he will go from a standing start, get out his feet and get across. He'll take a player on and have a shot. Uh, okay, he may not track back, but it doesn't matter. We've got so many fucking players back already. We don't need any more one, anyone else to track back. So play Mahoney. He's confident. He's got the ability to unlock a door. We've got too many players in our team that play, want to play it safe. No one wants the responsibility. It was like watching a team under Neil Harris. No one wants the responsibility. No one wants a crowd to get on their back, or in this case, no crowd. Uh, they don't want to get bollocking for the manager. I'm not sure what it is, but it's too many players in our team that play it too safe. Again, Jeb Wallace, been horrendous, horrendous yesterday. But at least he'll try it, and then you can't knock him for that. He knows he's, he's one of the few that can unlock a door. All these players playing... You know, playing it around the back three and, and playing, again, I'll point back to Woods. And I'm not digging him out, because I'll say it again, for those who don't listen to what I say, he's a brilliant footballer. But anyone could take it off a goalkeeper or off Sean Hutchinson and play a, play a 15-yard crossfield ball to Murray Wallace or Marlon Romeo when the nearest middles were players 25 yards away. That's not, that's, for me, that's, it's, it's, it's over football, if anything. It's too much football. We've got to get more people further out the pitch and more involved in games. Uh, that, that's about it really I'm not really going to go into the game it was a shocking game absolutely one of the worst I've ever seen I remember Blackburn at home last season when they beat us 2-0 that was one of the worst games I've ever seen that was under Neil Harris this was really bad yesterday really bad and like I said you know, too many people going through the motions out there when Billy Mitchell came on you can see he's buzzing he, he, he's bubbly he's fr you know, he, wants, he thrives off getting the ball and he's, he's trying to get forward he's trying to get in the right areas our players are just going through the motions they're not even trying to get into the right areas and that's why he has to play the youth. Uh, get on to the first goal, by the way. Jake Cooper, the foul on Jake Cooper. Uh, if you thought that was a foul, I must have been watching a different game because the player hasn't checked his run. He hasn't you know, adjusted his run. He hasn't run across Cooper. They've just sort of collided and, and Cooper's gone over. It wasn't Cooper's fault. It can happen. But it definitely, you know, there was no movement with his foot towards the ball from, I think it was a Samba Lomba or whoever it was, the middles of a striker. It, never a foul in my book. I don't know when people are saying that's a blatant foul. Never. In my book, never, ever a foul. I'd love to say it was, but it wasn't. We lose the game 2-0, and it was just... It was awful. It was really, 
really fucking awful. Now, we're going forward. We're playing Hull on Saturday. <laughs> we're playing Hull on Saturday. One good thing I get to take from this, I've been the whole last two seasons. I haven't got to fucking go there Saturday because it's a shithole, like it says in the name. And uh, last year, we didn't have much luck there either. It was a terrible game there last year. I think it was 2-0 down quite early. So, going to Hull. Uh, not interested in the result. Play the youth. I don't care if we lose 6 0, right? Bring James Brown in at right back. Bring Billy Mitchell in centre midfield. Put Junior Tienza, left wing back. Uh, get Hayden Muller involved on the bench. Play George Alexander up front. Because if you don't play these players now, you might as well release them. You're never ever going to play them. We are a club that play it too fucking safe, always. Always have for a long, long time. Play it too safe, but we, we won't play youth. And okay, last season we was in a relegation dogfight. The season before we was pushing for the playoffs. Uh, we're out of the playoffs now. We're never, ever going to make the playoffs. Five points off Cardiff. It ain't even worth talking about. The way we're performing, it isn't even worth mentioning. So play these players, because if you don't play them now, if I was one of those players that didn't get to play in the last few games of this season, I'd just say, well, can I, can I have a transfer then, please? Because, you know, obviously, clearly, I've got no future at the club. If you're not going to play me now, you're never, ever going to play me. So we play Hull. They're 22nd in the table, ironically replacing Middlesbrough, who come out the bottom three after beating us. Um, since lockdown, they have played five games. They've only won one. They've scored a few goals along the way. They've scored seven goals. And they've had some difficult games of late. They lost 2-1 yesterday to Bristol City. They lost 4-2 away to West Brom. And they got a good 3-3 draw away at Birmingham. So, you know, they're not out of the running. They're not out of the running at all. They've got players that don't want to play for them. And they're in a difficult position. But they are fighting for their lives. The one to watch for them... It's going to be Herbie Kane, who remembers him. We nearly signed him on loan under Neil Harris. He was on loan at Doncaster last season. He's a Liverpool player. And since lockdown, he's scored two goals for Hull. What about that? A goal-scoring midfielder. Who's ever heard of one of them? I haven't heard of one of them for a long time. A goal-scoring midfielder. The one to watch is Herbie Kane. I've got to give you a prediction. And my prediction is this. Try to avoid watching this football match if you can. That's a bit of a free advice. That's not a prediction. Because this is going to be a, a horrendous game of football. And I... I've got the opportunity to play snooker on Saturday. And I love, I love my snooker if you follow the channel on my social media. But this is a football channel. So I will be watching the game. Um, but we're going to lose. I can't see anything other than a loss. Hull are fighting for their lives. They've been free scoring. They've got to win the game. And I'm going to go, I'm going to go for a 3-0 Hull win. Because I think our players have absolutely given up on this season. And it's a shame. It's a shame. So on the basis of us losing 3-0, I'm going to say play the youth. Play them all. Tyler Berry, even someone who I don't think is that great. Um, just play them. You never know what could happen. You could get a little gem in there. And, and you know, and, and like Jamie Morley said in his Lions Lounge, then bring them into the first team fold. And eventually, they could be a star for you. You get a good good return out of them first team appearance-wise. And then sell them on for a little bit of a bit of profit. Hashtag pay the club. So, yeah, it's, um, it's depressing, this video. And I'm sorry. Uh, you've had to relive it. If you have stayed to the end, it's about 20 minutes long as I'm looking at the clock. Thanks. I appreciate it. I hope it's made sense. I hope I'm wrong about the prediction tomorrow, but uh, sorry, Saturday, it's Thursday today. But I absolutely can't see it. The players have given up completely. Um, and I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why. A lot of them under contract as well. We recently signed like, you know, longer contract extensions. So it's not as if they know they're on the way out of the club and they're not fucking interested. They was interested before lockdown, but now they're not. But there you go. Listen, this isn't a character assassination of any players. I'm just telling you, honestly, what I thought of the performance and the individuals and the problems that that we have. Corners is a massive thing. Please, if we get a corner on Saturday, don't all go and stand on the crossbar and let the, let the ball go behind you. So you've got to try and jump and get some power to redirect it the opposite direction back to goal. Very basic. Very basic. Drop a lot of them. My, you know... As much as I've you know, not dug Marlon out here, I've maybe highlighted some of his weaker points. He seems injured. He come off against Cholton. He looked like he was struggling. He come off yesterday as well. Yeah, he did for Billy. So um, give Marlon a rest. Give Jed a rest. The players might be, you know, there's been a lot of games. Oh, finally, I'll just say before I wrap it up because I forgot to say it because I've got written down on my notes there. Jamie Vardy, Sergio Aguero. And I'm thinking, what? why is that written in my notes? I'll tell you why that's written in my notes. Bradshaw, Smith, Bradshaw, Smith. It does. It wouldn't matter if we had Sergio Aguero, Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi and Jamie Vardy up front. We don't create any chances. If we don't create chances, we can't score goals. Our inability to create chances is, is frightening. Our first shot yesterday was after 41 minutes. That was a P-roller from Jenna, the keeper. 
Matsmith nearly scores after Conor Mahoney comes on. Um, strikers seem to be a problem for us, but it's not. We need to go out and buy a five million pound strike. I've seen some of the comments on on, uh, on the social media outlets for Mill. We need to get in positions. You know, <coughs> I'm trying to think of a decent way to say it about being crude. But you know, a striker can't score a goal if he hasn't got football at his feet or he hasn't got the goal in front of him. If he's got his back to goal and he's 60 yards from that goal with with, a, with an opposition defender up his ass, has he has he meant to score? He doesn't work like that. You know, you got a, it's a long production line before you get to that goal and you get the opportunity to shoot on score, and we we don't do it. And it's been such a letdown. It's been such a letdown. I see some of our. I went back over my timeline the other day, and it was a hundred days since football. Football's back. Jason Malumbi's little dance at. Nottingham Forest, so excited, and it's just been such a fucking letdown. It's been awful. Across the board, all football. Not just ours. All football has been shocking. And Saturday, I fear, could be the fucking worst one yet. Because Hull will beat us if we continue to perform like we have since lockdown, even the win at Charlton was shit. Um, it got dressed up a little bit. We polished the turd there because we got a, we got a late goal through Cooper. But please, play the youngsters. Put Bart in goal. Uh... Put James Brown at right back. Get Junior Tienza in the team. Play the three centre backs and have them two bombing on. Have Billy Mitchell in centre midfield with Ben Thompson. Um, get George Alexander up front. Get Tyler Berry on the pitch on the bench. Get Aidan Muller on the bench. Get these players involved. Play Conor Mahoney. Get him playing. If he's going to figure next season, get him playing. Anyone that's not going to figure next season that's on loan, unfortunately, people like Jason Malumbi, then send him back. Don't play him again. If he's not going to play next season, there's no point playing him any further because we are not going to make the playoffs we are absolutely fucking miles off the playoffs so yeah that's it I've had enough now that'll do me and we are playing on Saturday so this is the pre-match prediction for that and a little bit of uh, whinging about yesterday again listen not a character assassination but sometimes my old man always says, says to me you know be a bit more box a little bit more clever with it be smart of it but I, I've just got to be honest and what I see I'm not digging anyone out it's been a good season I'm happy where the club are you know going forward we're in a good position like a lot of the players, I like all the players, but some of them just, you know, overrated, uh, not as good as we think they are. I mean, I don't want to keep going over it. £10 million for Jed, honestly, come on. He can't beat the first man on a cross, on a corner. He kicks it in the first man, that's six times in a row. So, you know, I'm not digging anyone out, it's just it's just what I'm watching. And as a fan, I hope that you, that's why people have watched this over the, uh, over the years, and I've kept the following I've got, because I just, just say what I see. As um, what's that? So you see, catchphrase. Right, that's enough. I'm done. Please subscribe to Lions TV. Let's hope I'm not right about Saturday. Come on, you Lions.